Welcome back to Case Closed Anime Review Episode Number 27, Part 4. This one, I'm covering the last 13 episodes of the series. Yes, finally I got the series done. After almost 6 months working on this series. Watching every single episode. Finally I got it done. Yes, I started this back in January. This is July. Basically, it took me until part way into the second week. Of, I started this thing almost, I would say as of this week, almost six months it has taken me to get done this series. I have never, ever had a series take me this long before. Not even one piece. People tend to criticize it as a joke of how long the damn series is. But that didn't take me six freaking months to do. You know how long it took me? A month and a half. And now, the reason why I was like that was because I didn't have a job at that point. Now I do. That's one of the factors of why this show took me as long, took me longer than it usually just finish up a show around this particular length. If I had watched the show roughly like a couple of years ago, I probably would have gotten done a lot quicker than this. I mean, it's lengthwise. I probably would have got this done in probably about two, maybe three months, not six. Yes, I have never, th this is by far the first and going to be the only series that I watch that is this far in. The only other series that's basically closest is One Piece. As far as I know, I have not encountered any other anime. Well, there's kind of one that's kind of like this, and it's Pokemon. The only difference is with that one, I've watched that one since the beginning of the show, so it's not really a big problem with me. This show... I started watching the show back in... The show started back in 1995. The show was aired for 22... Released for 24 years. And it's had 27 seasons. And this season took so long to get through. Which I kind of predicted it did. I mean, the previous seasons basically took me like about a week to get through. This one took me two... Like a little over a week. Like it almost took me almost like a little over a week. I kind of predicted basically this time get these episodes done but now they're done now let's talk about these episodes now here's the thing about these last 13 episodes is that all but two are all filler yes you have roughly 11 filler episodes and two canon episodes yes let's talk about the canon episodes first the search for Mary chan taking up episodes 941 942 covering roughly three chapters of manga which, by the way, this is the most recent canon episode released. And the whole thing of this one follows what happened during the... That what happened in 1927-1928. That, both two one-hour episodes. Well, the whole thing was Ichiku solving this big murder case following an actress. And it got news. And there's mass hysteria about this. It happened on the entire two-parter. Excuse me. And Sichi is like... Jimmy's like, oh, crap. <laughs> If if the black organization like I, I kept saying to myself like I was watching like, damn if the black organization family is alive, they're gonna find him pretty quickly. Yep. So luckily enough that his parents found out about this, contact the person who well contact the administrator that decided to had this post, and basically they offered her a bribe in order to get the post basically retract their statement just an illusion. Yeah. What was the bribe? What bribe with? Their autographs. Yep. Now, I will talk about the ending in just a minute, but the whole thing the search of Mary Chun. Yeah, apparently Kona basically has this thing where this is probably by far the only case he does not get directly involved with. Because they allege he has a cold even though he's perfectly fine. So, they basically, the, the, the Junior Detective League, basically Anita, Amy, George, and Mitch, go find Maria. This adorable little girl who didn't show up for school. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they're asked by the teacher, Kabuki Sensei. And of course, Remy shows up in this episode. Yeah, I should point out though, she appears a couple times in this episode. The first time you see her, now in the manga, they actually make a change to the manga. I actually reread re 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 this chapter recently. In the manga, she's pretty much looking like she's in her underwear. Here, she looks like she's wearing a nightgown, which, okay, fine. If you want to make that change, fine. But they at least kept the fact she has scars on her arms. Yes, she has scars on her arms. 
Yep, and when she goes to school, she wears the same thing. At least she has a good reason why she wears a dress with long sleeves to hide the scars. Now, she has not appeared that much, so yeah. Also, the... Well, what's his name? The the guy who worked at the sushi restaurant, the one Conan met back in a two-parter. I'm trying to think. Yeah, he appears in this episode. Yeah, they, they appeared like a bunch of you in this episode. Like, come on, talk basically. Yeah, like him... Remy and the the managing supervisor. Who, these people are suspected being rum. Yes, the people who are suspected being rum appear in this episode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, surprisingly, they appear in this two parter. Now. Wataki, he doesn't do very much. I mean, first time he seems looking at paper, next time you see him, he's visiting a goddess's house loving some sushi. And that's all you see of him. Subaru was actually in part one partially for like one scene, and then he's seen like in a background image at the end of the following episode. Mm hmm. Yep. So the whole thing with her, okay. So they go to her grandmother's house and they basically go on a quest. They search around the house, eventually they find her. Though at one point they had to ask Conan for help. Uh, basically, it's all thing of feeding bird. Basically, it's a special bird. Basically, it's a dipping bird. Filled with water, and reflecting the water goes back out the bathroom. Goes to this room with a door, and basically, it's sort of like this heat, the cool air inside. So, like hot air, so war. They eventually, open the door, and they find Mary. She's perfectly fine. She apparently had been sleeping, and she missed school. Yeah. It was an interesting puzzle quest. I like it. It's really interesting. And they mentioned the whole thing with the arrow case. The the thing that they mentioned before. Happened a while back before they met Anita. Quite nice to reference that. Now, the end of the episode revealed the name of the leader of the black organization. A man who was referenced way back in episode 219. This man's name is Renya Customer. Yeah, they actually figured out, though, that... Basically, of uh, two words from a uh, but from a uh, broken mirror. Yeah, turns out that Conan made an enemy of the most powerful man in Japan, a multimillionaire who's not supposed to exist. This guy is rumored to be 140 years old. He's supposed to be dead. Yeah, as for how the heck he's alive, no idea. Also. Bourbon is in the episode. Yeah, he's in the episode. He's by far the only one with the black organization actually in the episode who's not there as a freaking background image. Yeah, these people were there are simply just a background image. Yes. Jin Vaca, the two people who started this whole mess. Vermouth, a woman who's not been seen in quite a while. Shanti and Crumb. Yeah, these five people who've not appeared in a long time. For some reason, the manga is not features characters. I mean, I think the most recent appearance they made in the manga was actually at the start of the most recent arc that just wrapped up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Four people. One of whom happens to be a really good character, and the char and the they just stopped appearing. I don't know. What the heck? But this is an absolute fun two-parter. And I kept thinking, though, maybe eventually they'll do another, like, they, they may adapt the bunny case soon, because that's the next, next case, the bunny club case. I haven't heard anything yet. Maybe they're going to say that for 9, 49, 50. Possible, yes. As for the rest of the filler episodes. Yep. Starting with 933. This one is called the Third Bed Kidnapping Case. Yeah, this one's about, it's a two-parter involving missing horse. And it turns out the horse went missing at the end of part one. And it was found by, it turns out they supposedly killed it. But nope, the horse is still alive at the end of the two-parter. And the person behind all this mess is the owner. Yep, and he got arrested. Yep. It's an, it's an okay little two-parter. Yeah. Most of a horse, I don't mind stuff about horses. Yep, fortune teller three customers. Yep. 
so a fortunate gets killed, and apparently three people are suspected of basically killing her, and it turns out it's actually The one per it turns out was actually the Renuks that basically killed him because well something about basically because his failed restaurant that's pretty much the reason why he killed her because is because the fortune healing basically caused the restaurant to fail. Mm -hmm. Intrigue of the food court. Yes, also the last no appearance in the anime of Inspector Saito. This was a completely pointless episode. Yeah, yeah. Apparently. By the way, Anita's nowhere... Uh, here's something interesting, though. Conan is actually not in this episode. He's there as an illusion. He doesn't make a physical appearance in the episode. And here's the interesting thing about this episode. It's set up for a movie. Yep. It's set up for this movie, which actually came out this past April. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a pre-story for Fist the Blue Star. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, yeah, this was an okay little two... Okay, standalone episode. It's... It's like... It's like but nope. It turns out, yep, they were trying to blow up something. Oh, yeah, McGuire's actually there in a suit. Yep, a freaking suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next we have The Killer Fist of Telos. Yeah. Featuring this gigantic bronze statue from Greek mythology. I have never heard of the statue at all. A lot of the other stuff I've heard of. One looks like the character's inspiration for Goku. Who also did appear for in the, in the series High School DXD. As a member of the Hero Brigade. Mm -hmm. Yep. And there's one person that basically named. Who was this guy named Hanru. Yeah. Basically he got. Let's just say attacked. And. It turns out it was one person that kind of, well, they hinted at him being the one who did it, and it was the guy who designed Telos. Yep. Yeah, and he's pretty much the reason for it. Yeah, and the place basically was under, let's say, it had been the red for a while, so they sold it to this Franklin Planning, which had become their Japanese branch, and the like loose name, basically it's renamed temporarily to the, the, the designer's name. And also, this is the last known time that, well, that Serena's uncle Jill, yeah, where he appears, though he is going to return in the Kaido Kid, the last, uh, the most recent Kaido Kid case, when eventually adapted. Well, this is the last appearance for now in the anime. <laughs> he appears briefly in part one, that's it, in a flashback. Mm hmm. Yep. But this was a pretty good little two-parter. Also, this is the last episode air in the Hensai period. Yeah, the Hensai period. Yeah, because the emperor who, of Japan, who had been emperor since the 80s, he actually stepped down this past April. So his son basically took over as emperor. And, excuse me, the Killer Fist Telos is actually the last one to air during the, the Hensai period. Mm -hmm. It's the last one. And then we have the dangerous fossil finding trip, a standalone episode, which is also the last known time in the anime to feature Yamura, and it's also the first one to air during the Rao period. Yeah, that's the era that Japan's in right now. They're in new era, which the current emperor is the son of the previous one. Yeah, from what I heard, the reason why he that he, he what happened though, he decided to abdicate due to the fact he got older. He's he's old. And apparently he's having to, the, to mental and health problems. That's pretty much the reason why I stepped down, which I, I read about them like, okay, I can kind of believe that. And now his son, who I think is in his 50s, is now the ruler of Japan. Well, he's the emperor of Japan now. Mm -hmm. And his wife is now the first lady of Japan. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. This one, uh, the Daily Fossil Finding Trip, this is a standalone episode involving dinosaur. Uh, basically... Bones and this particular, we have this guy called Origami who got killed by a poisoning. And there was this whole thing, this thing about moon droppings. Yeah, it turns out it was fake. And this guy, the scientist 
Today he was going to confess something to the freelance supporter. Very beautiful woman. Once I saw like, damn, what a beautiful woman. And here's the weird thing about this one. This one, believe it or not, does not feature Richard Moore. No. Doesn't feature Richard Moore. And, well, doesn't even feature Ren. Nope. These two are absent, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ren, of course, is not featured in the most, with the exception of the canon episode, Search Murray Chun. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention uh, Masumi Sarah. But so she appears in that two-parter. She does nothing. She appears briefly at the start of it on a train. She's absent for the rest of the episode. Pops up in the next episode for like just two scenes. Just talking to Ren. That's it. That's her only appearance in two-parter. Yep. Though that's the most recent appearance in the anime, though she is she does appear in the most recent arcs. She appeared in the most recent the, the last arc that, that was released, which eventually probably adapted to at least a two parter. At least, well, yeah, the arc that comes right after the next one probably adapted for a three parter, possibly because it's a five chapter arc. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what else? Oh yeah, the guy who killed the other guy via cyanide poisoning. Turns out was the mayor. Yep. Because apparently he was going to basically blackmail him. Yep. That's pretty much it. Next we have the missing girlfriend. This one was quite interesting. Also as well as this for lover. Yeah. About a woman who possibly committed suicide. Yes. Possibly. And nope. She committed suicide. The whole thing with this one was basically just... A scam, just basically just having her fake her death so she can have the guy who alleged to be her boyfriend get arrested for the murder of her daughter. Yep. And got a chance to run tax cap, which is quite nice. This is a pretty okay episode. Not very much to hunt right home on this one. Mm hmm And then we come to, like, right after the two-parter. The can of two-parter, the awesome can of two-parter. We come to three, uh, at least three episodes. First of which is the Tokyo Burrows Collection. Uh, when I watch this episode, I'm like, I watch this episode today. I'm like, oh my gosh. It's a good thing it's Steve Rich because this episode is so bad. It felt as though this was a script that was just something that just the writer it's probably a rejected script from that just happened to be just lying on the floor or someplace yeah this feels like a rejected script from like like a rejected script from like i'm not sure it's like someone just came with this one on the fly because they gotta fill out some filler until they decided to, until they decided to adapt the next canon story Let's just basically have a filler episode. That means nothing. Yeah, we have this one lady accuses her friends of trying to kill her with this corporate cabbage. And they investigate them. Yeah, Richard Moore, I'm coming to investigate them. And apparently all the women hate her for stealing their boyfriends. Yep. And it turns out the end, yep, it was all a complete big fat lie. McGuire got a chance to chat with them. And that's it. Yeah, they got chastised, and this whole thing was just an excuse to promote the product. Yep. I watched this, I'm like, damn, this is a complete waste of time of an episode. It is so bad. Like, oh my gosh, it's so freaking bad. Ugh. Like, oh my gosh. Then we have the cost of likes, which, here's the weird thing about this two-parter. There's no Richard Moore, and there's no Ren. Nope. We have McGuire appears in this two-parter. Oddly enough, he only appears for the opening episode of this two-parter. And here's the weird thing. He appears for like one scene toward the end of part one. Yes, this felt like another episode they just basically rushed to put the frickin' screen. At least the animation looks good. It feels like the writing was very rushed. It's like, okay... George is in the hospital for something through cloud damage of a fake bomb scare. Yep, and the whole thing was planned by a guy who had... There was a guy who basically was suspected basically behind these particular cloud damages. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it turns out it was Cal Kerm who actually was in love with Haruka, this beautiful woman who's actually just a couple years younger than he is. Like, he was jealous of the fact that Saitama, the guy who was basically a victim, was living with her. But nope, he doesn't see her that way. He doesn't see her as a potential girlfriend. They're just close friends. Yep. Yeah. I mean, by the end of the episode, the guy gets arrested for also the murder of one guy named Oka. Yeah. Asubo. Yep, he gets killed. And... Yeah, apparently he got killed because he, he witnessed him basically doing the fake bomb scare. Yep. Yep. And that's really it. And the, and the guy doesn't explain to the woman, like, why he did all this. The episode ends, like, on an okay note, and just George gets, well, gets chased by Mitch and Amy, and that's it. Okay. And the final thoughts of these ones, like, some of these episodes, like the, the previous Kevin Lip episode was okay. The Canada episode was fantastic. But the last three episodes aired, like, oh my gosh. Like, you watch these, and you're like, What's the whole point of these two, these three episodes? Really, it's nothing. In the case of this last two-parter, there was barely anything here for a two-parter. It felt as though this is basically could have been just a standalone episode, but no, we have to stretch it out to a two-parter. This did not feel like it should have been a two-parter. The other ones made sense. This one had no business being one. Like, I would have easily cut out a lot of the bullcrap in this episode. I would have had the episode just be just one episode, not two. Yes, the cost of likes over a freaking photo. Oh, yeah, and he's also planning to kill his friend. Because of jealousy. Yep. But, yeah, that's it for the episodes for now. Until the next episode airs, which is going to be a fill episode. And that one looks... A little bit more interesting than this piece of garbage of a two-parter. Mm -hmm. Yes. Though, here's the weird thing about the anime. It appears that, it appears that anytime they air like a two-parter, they have to take a week off lately for some reason. And then when they come back, they air like two, maybe three episodes. Like, if it's standalone, I'll have another one next week. But if it's two-parter, we have to take a week off. And this last one aired, not this past Saturday, but the week prior. Yep. Next episode looks a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, that's it for this particular review. Next time you see a review of this series, probably be as of right now, just whenever I review a new episode of the anime, the movies, which I'm going to review soon, and of course, any specials. Now, since the fact I finished reviewing Case Closed now, I'm going to reveal exactly in this video what, what anime I'm going to watch next. What series I'm going to watch next? Magic Kaido. Yep. Yeah, I wanted to save for this particular video right here, where I reveal exactly what series it is. It's Magic Kaido. Yeah, it's basically going to be a three-video series. The first one's going to cover the, the TV special, which air first, because why not? And it's made of the same company to make case closed. The second one will cover the 24-episode season the, of the series. And the third one will cover Magic Kaido's two OVAs it has. And that's it. I'm also, in between these things, I'm reviewing the movies, basically, three movies at a time. Like, at the finish, with the TV special for Magic Kaido, I'm watch the first three Case Closed films, and then it'll be the series, the the 24 episode series, and then the OVAs, and the first, and then the films four through six, and then, like, another series, which I'll reveal after I finish the Magic Kaido, which... Here's the thing of Magic Kaido. It's not very long. At least it's not 900 episodes. The Magic Kaido anime is only 24 episodes, so that'll probably take me about two, maybe three days. This one probably won't take me very long, the Magic Kaido special, because it's only just 12, 22 minute specials. You get my thoughts on those? Possibly either tonight or tomorrow at the latest. Probably tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But these two next few. Um, also today... I'm going to do three of the videos today. Uh, two of them. This video was supposed to do yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to finish the season yesterday, so, so, so I did it today. 
Next thing I'm going to do, what I'm going to do next, view the newest chapter of the Seven Deadly Sins. And after that, be two movie reviews. Why two? Because the other one was supposed to be for yesterday, but I didn't get a chance to do it. But basically, two movie reviews next to James Bond movies. You'll find my last of those soon. Okay? See you in the next video. Bye.